So hello again people, uh, new day, another project. In fact today uh, I'm in our rehearsal booth I may say. And uh, what I want to do, we have this uh, blamed Behringer Europower PMP3000. So I was trying to find the reality about the power, the exit power of this kind of amplifiers, almost nothing. And they are advertising here two times uh, 600 watts or something. So I feel like today it's uh, time to clear this out. And I'm going to do that in a proper way. I mean, no dummy loads, nothing but loudspeakers, cables and this kind of signals generators. Then we're going to have a clear idea about the power can deliver on 8 ohms on 4 ohms too. For now let's start with a 8 ohm load. Let's measure the loudspeaker impedance and uh, or resistance I may call it. So I made this cable over here to have a really easy access. 9.6 ohms. Test number one. Let me get my oscilloscope ready. Let's plug the loudspeaker to the amplifier and here we have the oscilloscope connection. I already have a resistor here for uh, in case that we have more power than the oscilloscopist can take it. So the first test 1000 Hertz. Okay, we have everything here. Let's go. Signal on and power. So it's much more than the oscilloscope can take. So that's why I have to a nine mega ohms resistance here. And this works like a 10 times attenuator. All the signals will be divided by 10. By the way, this is DCO138. So I have over here a nine mega ohms resistors. And that means uh, the voltage will be divided by 10. And then we can have a clear situation of the power output. There we are. Let me get ready with my signal generator here. Okay. So I'm starting with 100 Hertz power on. So I have the signal over there. Let's see the readings. So I think I can push it a little bit more. So we still have some more volume to go. Until we see. Let me have another. To have a clear situation here. A little bit more. Oh yes, now we are on red. Let me try some more. Oh yeah, start clipping. You see, now we have this, is getting a little bit squared. So let's have these numbers down. So we got RMS, 4.43 volts. And peak to peak, we got 12.9 the frequency is very clear 100 nice so this is the first test now let me have a test with 1000 Hertz let's change here the frequency okay and let's go Let's change the time base a 
little bit more volume. So we have the same, 4.22 RMS 9, 8, 9, something like this. Very clear 1000 Hz frequency here. And the mixer, by the way, it's almost on red. Look there. Now, let's have a test with 10,000 Hz. We can't hear that because the subwoofer is, but I have over there the amplifier, it's on red. Look, you can see that. Let me have this cables away. So I'm running now a subwoofer, that's why you can hear it. We can see there we have 2.21 volts. So the power somehow is getting a little bit down. We have already the red, the amplifier is on red here and we have peak to peak 6.4 volts. So this is one channel. Now I'm going to channel B. So we're going to have the same test here, 1,100 Hz, 1,000 uh, Hz and 10,000 Hz to see if, the, if we have the same results. 422, the same, the same readings like the other one. I mean 10,000 Hz, it's the same. Okay, there we go. The amplifier is on red. So, we got the same readings, almost. It can be a attenuation through the resistor. It, it's not properly done, but normally we are really interested about um, 1000 Hz. This is the standard. Okay. A little bit more. And now it's distorting. It's limiting there, you see. So we have the same readings, 4.2. Let's say if we really push it like this, we ha even have 4.83, but we don't need that. So this is same readings, 4.2, 4.22, nice. Okay, so this was with 9.6 ohms. Now, I have to make same tests with uh, 4.36 ohms. So the first test in this situation with 4.3 ohms at 100 Hertz. Yes, the same results. Okay, let's go to 1000. So let's say we have like 4.43 the maximum. You see the point is this is a class D amplifier. So probably it's a kind of uh, limitation, a kind of power lim limitation over there. So we can't take more than this. But anyway, the wave is very clean as you can see. So it starts limiting around 4.22, same story like before. So that's the results here for this uh, Behringer PMP3000. It's time for conclusion and let's do all the mathematics here. We're gonna use this uh, formula, power equals voltage squared divided by resistance and we have different resistances and different tests and different uh, frequencies okay so if we consider test one with the load 9.6 ohms and we have for 100 hertz we have rms 4.3 volts for 1000 and this is the most conclusive one we have 
same RMS 4.22 volts and 10,000 okay this is just a uh, this is just an experiment here 2.21 I don't know why I don't care and now let's do all the mathematics here we have to multiply this by 10 because we had that 9 mega ohms divider so that means 200 Hertz we had 44.3 volts 1000 we have 42.2 volts and here we have 22.1 volts okay so if we apply this formula here let's say 44.3 times 44.3 divided by 9.6 that gives 204 watts let me see here 1000 Hertz so we have 42.2 times 42.2 divided by 9.6 and we got 185 watts and that one it's even worse I don't know why I really don't know why uh, but okay let's do it anyway 22 times 22 divided by 9.6 so over here we have 50 watts that that's uh, with uh, 9.6 ohms when I change it the output resistance to 4.3 ohms I had to 100 Hertz almost the same results so we got 4.3 uh, 4.38 volts times 10 that means 43.8 volts and if we apply the formula we have 43.8 times 43.8 divided by 4.3 and it gives me 446 watts and this is pretty okay so this amplifier PMP 3000 from Beringer it advertised 2 times 600 watts all I can say that in pure sinus signal for 9.6 ohms we have around 200 watts per channel with perfect sinusoidal so it's no clipping no uh, attenuation of the signal so it's pure sinus sign okay and with 4.3 ohms we had around 446 watts let's say 450 and um, this is very good this is really nice this is pure signal no distortion anything for this class of amplifier it's a class D amplifier by the way and this is the reality no dummy loads loudspeakers connected to the amplifier pure sinus wave and these are the results well i hope this is useful and uh, i'll be back with some new projects until then don't forget to have fun be safe and bye bye